turn this over to Brian and Jonah. Thank you. Sure. All right. Well, thank you all very much for having us. Um, I know we're running up on 11 o'clock, so we're trying to get this done in about an hour or so here. We want to keep this pretty interactive. Uh, so if you have any questions that come up or you're thinking of it along the way, feel free to interrupt me. I have no problem with that at all. Okay, so what do I want to talk about? It's not a good start. Am I doing it wrong here? Oh, you got okay. it. Okay. So here's a brief agenda. I want to just give you a very basic introduction of you know who I am and what my role is and, and how I help other organizations like yours. Um, spend just about five or ten minutes on healthcare reform because this does frame a little bit of uh, what we're trying to get to. And then uh, the cooperative experience that we have, give you some examples of um, other organizations that we've done this with, go through some of the requirements, and uh, what this eventually is going to look like when it's all rolled out. Oh, go the wrong way. Okay, so very briefly about the organization I work for is Arthur J. Gallagher. Uh, we are the fifth biggest insurance broker, risk management consultant. Some of the competitors you probably know of ours, uh, you know, the Sears Tower changed its name to the to Big Willie now, right? Willis is one of our main competitors. Uh, organizations like that. One of the differences between us and them is we have a stronger focus on the employee benefits side of things than they do. Um, and within that employee benefits uh, spectrum, I am the head of the Emerging Markets Division there. We have about 10 employees on our Emerging Markets team. And really what the Emerging Markets team does is focus on businesses between about two employees and two, three, four hundred employees, really, so that um, that insurance marketplace where it's a little bit tougher to get rates, um, there's less information you have out there to make decisions, um, and focusing on uh, putting together programs like this for organizations um, like yourselves. Okay, can I stop you real fast? Sure. I'm sorry, I'm going to do this a lot, um, but this is important. We could have tried to do this without Arthur J. Gallagher. There, there's two, there are two distinct ways you can try to form a health insurance pool. Um, we could have taken it upon ourselves and become registered ourselves as brokers, and we, our likelihood of success would have been dramatically lower than bringing in a top insurance company like Arthur J. Gallagher who is behind us on this and pushing forward for it. So I just wanted everybody to know um, we are lucky to have a, a insurance company or, or a consulting company like Arthur J. Gallagher who's going to bat for us. Great. All right, so basically the reason why I have uh, just a little bit of information here on uh, health care reform is what this is doing more and more in the small business marketplace is forcing employers to think about um, their employee benefits, their health insurance in the long term, right? A lot of times, uh, as an organization, you will get uh, renewal in for your health insurance, it goes up 20%, you make plan changes, um, try to get that number down, you increase the amount that you're actually gonna have to pay if you go to the doctor, um, make some uh, tweaks to that. Well, obviously, health care reform is gonna have an impact on every single person on every organization, but really what it's focusing on um, with, within our client base is making sure clients um, understand all the elements of it and how it's going to play a path, yeah, have an impact on their organization. Um, basically, one of the key elements to it is expanding coverage. Um, so some of the things that you'll probably hear about a lot are you know, banning insurance companies from discriminating based on pre-existing conditions. Um, it's, it's opening up these health insurance exchanges in 2014. And one of the interesting things about the health insurance exchanges that you'll see um, and how larger organizations are dealing with this are um, on a state level there's some thought that um, let's say Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois for example um, all these insurance companies are competing to be on these exchanges so they can get individuals into um, into the Blue Cross network well there's large speculation that that network isn't going to be the same as your current Blue Cross Blue Shield network and the way that they're going to rate these are going to be tiered by age as well so how employers then are reacting to um, what, the, what the exchanges are going to look like is going to be an interesting dynamic in the next um, couple of years here. We'll, be, we'll really get a good sense of what Illinois' program looks like, hopefully uh, in 2012, so we can start helping um, organizations uh, determine what their actual plan looks like and you know, whether or not this is the best route for your employees to go to or whether or not it's, it's um, going to be more viable for you to keep your own type of plan. Okay. 
The two states already created exchanges, Utah and one other, I think. Right. I can't remember the other. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, Florida also has kind of uh, determined who their insurance companies are going to be. So it's really starting to take, take shape. Um, you know, this is one of those things that we have people within our organization that are kind of always monitoring this to make sure that you know, our clients know about it. And you're right, it is a very statewide type of uh, decision that they're going through. So move on from this and we keep going backwards every time here, I think, <laughs> until I get this uh, under control. All right, so basically, again, lowering costs, improving quality, that's, that's the uh, general um, idea behind this. Um, so who's paying for reform? Um, there's a wide variety of things here that um, that the legislation has set up. I was uh, speaking earlier about, you know, we have 2,500 pages of legislation from the PPACA. Well, what's interesting is there's all these regulations that are coming out, right? We just had grandfather regulations come out that basically have said, you know, if you like your plan, you can keep it. Well, the grandfather regulations kind of address that. Um, and, and what we're seeing is that can be up to 500,000 pages worth of or, um, legislation once it's all said and done. So um, here's what we have right now. Again, the midterm elections um, may have an impact on how this is all going to shake out, but it's something that's a fluid, obviously, uh, situation. So uh, we're, we're having an eye on this, but um, basically, uh, this, is the, this is the timeline that they've laid out for employers, and some of these things are still changing, like the W 2 reporting. But uh, <laughs> basically, you can see it's some of this impact is starting right now, and how we develop a program um, to kind of incorporate um, some of these uh, some of these requirements is going to be vital. Okay, so this kind of transitions into the the now what, right? So yeah, I want to stop you before that again. I'm sorry because when you're talking to people about our plan, you know we do have a lobbyist, um, and our, you know he has an interest in seeing whether a small business insurance plan could be put on the exchange in time. Um, in my opinion, that's really not something that, that that I'm concerned with getting everybody in the SBA so who doesn't have insurance, insurance. So we're sort of going to try to keep our focus on that particular um, aspect, and then I'm sure if there's an exchange possibility, that would be fine. But however, we can get the best rates. Small business owners can get the best rates and bring down their, uh, their premiums and increase their coverage is what our ultimate goal is. So people may ask you about that. Are we going to be on the exchange? The answer is who knows what's going to happen with the exchange. We're laser focused on creating a plan. That's a great point. Yeah, one of the things that, that I hear all the time working with organizations is let's say they have 10 employees on their plan. They say, well, I'm not going to get hit with the penalties. Why do I keep offering benefits? I want out of this game. I'm just going to allow every, every employee to go to the exchange. Um, even then, employers that have over 50 employees where they're going to hit with a potentially $2,000 penalty, they say, I don't, I'm just going to, it's, I'm paying more than $2,000 for each employee right now. Um, why would I keep this? Why would I not just pay the fine and be done with it? Well, what we're trying to help organizations decide is what is the best strategy for you, right? And, and when you take a look at benefits, it can be a sensitive issue with employees. Right, the health insurance impacts everybody within an organization. So we really want to get to a place where we're having a high level discussion with an organization to say, all right, your benefits program is part of your overall compensation to your employees. How are they going to perceive it if you get rid of it? If that's a strategy you want to take, that's fine. Let's just make sure we communicate that to employees. Um, and how are you going to be financially impacted one way or another? Okay, so what the, what the, um, what the reform has done in a lot of business owners' minds is essentially made them take a more long-term uh, approach to how they're going to provide benefits and, and, and what can we do that's different than what we've done in the past, which is more of a band-aid type approach, right? I mean, in the small group market in Illinois, I mean, what small group is considered by insurance companies is anywhere, anywhere below 150 for Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Humana, they, those defined as under 100 employees. But what it's done is basically force companies to say, all right, I'm not going to necessarily just increase the amount that my employees are going to pay out of pocket for this plan or I'm not going to you know, tweak the deductible levels so they have to pay more, but what am I going to do on a long-term approach to take everything that healthcare reform is forcing us to do uh, from a plan perspective like the preventive care and how am I going to incorporate that into my long-term benefits strategy of the organization. Okay, so this is kind of where Gallagher comes into play. I'll give you a, a little bit of background on what we do with uh, um, respect to cooperatives. 
if you were to ask, like I said before, Willis or some of our competitors what Gallagher's niche is within the insurance brokerage and um, consulting arena, a lot of them would probably say, oh, they're the company that does all the pooling, right? So what we've done largely as an organization are um, create some of these, uh, what we consider alternate funding type of arrangement for organizations that's a little bit uh, unique to um, whether it's an association, a group of school districts, whatever it might be, um, to try to get them to have a viable alternative to the traditional way of buying health insurance. As you can see, we developed our first municipal uh, municipal pool in 1974, um, and then 150 pools we have nationwide. Now you can see there's a wide variety of the way that these are set up. It traditionally gets a little bit easier um, legislatively on the public entity <coughs> side of employers, those, those organizations that are not for profits. But we do have um, a lot of experience as well in, in, in creating them under an association type umbrella as well.